It's time once again for that business show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ, where business becomes show business. Jamie is a leading Tampa Bay real estate agent and featured on the Wall Street Journal's list of top 100 real estate agents in the nation. Jamie invites you to list your home with him today and learn more at tampabayradio.com. Now, live in studio and promoting the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy, your host, Jamie Maloney. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday, and thanks for checking in on this early morning to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. It's on every weekday morning here at 8 a.m. It's a show with a positive message as I talk to the different professionals from around the uh, community and different leaders and talking about what they're doing in our community to make a difference. If you're finding me on the air for the first time, please help support the show. Visit tampabayradio.com. Over there, all shows are available on demand. And you'll also see that I sell real estate after my uh, uh, morning gig here on the radio. So if I can in any way help you buying or selling real estate, please consider me a resource and get in touch with me. The best way to get me through the contact form over at tampabayradio.com. Well, it's a Valentine's Day weekend, and we've got a number of different events going on this weekend. We got a, and on the phone line here, we've got Fred Diodati, who is the lead singer of the 4 Aces, a group that's been together since the 50s here, and they're going to be putting on an event this weekend at the Pinellas Performing Arts Center, and I wanted to talk with Fred about that this morning. Fred, good morning to you. Good morning, Jamie. How are you doing in Florida? Because right here it's uh, getting close to uh, five degrees. Yeah, you, where are you out of? Up in Philly or up north? Where yeah, are you out West of? Ch- Westchester, Pennsylvania, about 25 miles outside of Philly. Well, when you're making the trek down here, you got an event here coming up here on Valentine's Day you got to be ready for. Well, I have a major problem. I've been married 63 years, and my wife is going to stay home and I'm <laughs> going to Florida. <laughs> we have a problem here. But, uh, yeah, so uh, Fred is the uh, lead singer of the Four Aces, a group that's been together since the 50s, and this event going on on Valentine's Day and the Pinellas Performance Arts or Pinellas Performing Arts Center and uh, tickets are $20 and available right now and if you mentioned that you heard it on the radio they are just $15 but uh, Fred I wanted to talk to you I mean your group has been together since the 50s I mean what do you own uh, what do you attest uh, the longevity of your group to I, I, I test the songs that we sang at that particular time in the early 50s the mid 50s the 60s and even into the 70s, uh, 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 those some of the songs that we sang uh, have sustained us all these years because they are really, not because we did it, they're beautiful love songs. And uh, also, we were fortunate enough to have some of our songs uh, be motion picture themes. For example, Love is a Many Splendid Thing, which uh, was a wonderful film in, in the 50s. Um, and then we did Three Coins in a Fountain, another motion picture. And a woman in love from another motion picture, Guys and Dolls, was the picture. So we were very fortunate in that regard to have been able to do songs uh, that have done pretty well uh, motion picture wise, yeah, and, and that has sustained us through the years. And you were uh, you weren't a founding member of the group, correct? But you came in pretty early on, correct? Yeah, I came in in '57. '57, and you're yeah. still uh, still with the group today. And I mean, that's just an incredible uh, career. Though. I mean, uh, you know, of all the songs that you have in uh, in your database of uh, you know data bank, I should say, of songs, what is your favorite one to perform? Oh, I would say by far it would be "Love Is a Many Splendid, uh, splendid Thing." I've, I've described it many times what, why we like this tune so much. First of all, it is the biggest hit the Four Aces have ever had. It was from a wonderful motion picture. But uh, I enjoy poetry, and if you read "Love Is a Many Splendid Thing," it's the April rose that only grows in the early spring. Uh, the, it's, it's poetry put to music, and uh, that's what I like about it so much. But again, it was the biggest seller we've ever had. Now, tell us a little bit about the event that's going on on Valentine's Day. You are performing at 2 o'clock again over at the Pinellas Performing Arts Center. What can we expect at this event? Well, you can expect a fantastic, uh, uh, well, he's a comic, he, he does magic. Uh, Elliot Smith uh, is absolutely outstanding. You have a comedian there, a comic that opens up for you? Yep. Okay. Sure it does. Yeah, I mean, he'll do a, a, a long set and then... Uh, We'll come on and do about an hour of singing songs, and of course, if, if we, the folks that come in to see us are quite often getting up in years, and they will request uh, uh, some of the old songs, some, some we'd have to pull out the music sheets for and, <laughs> and go over again, but uh, we, we just enjoy um, singing, what, doing what we do, and watching the people sit back and relax, and kind of reminisce. I know... Uh, 
when I hear an old song that I can relate to from my high school days or uh, when I was in the service or when we got married, there are songs that are very uh, favorable to us. My wife and I, for example, Tony Bennett's Because of You, every time we sing it, she wants to get up and dance, mm -hmm. no matter where we are. So it's a sentimental evening. It's an evening to reminisce and go back, and, and I can't think of anything more appropriate to, than, than to do it on, say, uh, I was going to say St. Patrick's. Or St. Uh, Patrick's. St. <laughs> Valentine's, <laughs> Valentine's Day. Yeah. Valentine's Day, yeah. I think you're thinking of a head to another show. How many shows do you uh, still do a year, roughly? Uh, we're doing about, I, I'm going to say about 20 shows a year. It's not, it isn't the way we used, we used to work. First of all, we're... It's it's a little tougher with the traveling now than it used to be. As far as we're concerned, it's it's convenient and everything, but uh, it's it's rough traveling. I'm getting up. Uh, I feel good. I feel great, but I'm getting a little up in years and uh, want to take it a little easier. So I'd say we do about 20 dates a year, uh, and uh, that's that's really enough. And we're very grateful that at this stage in our lives and stage in our careers, we're still able to uh, perform. Well, congratulations on an incredible career. I mean, that's an amazing uh, career. You're also in the uh, Hall of Fame, and you probably have, I know you have a number of uh, gold uh, record hits, and just an incredible uh, incredible story, and I congratulate you on your success in the uh, in the music business. So, well, Jamie, thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Fred, take care. Well, uh, I know a number of people listening are going to be uh, checking out the uh, show uh, this Valentine's Day. So uh, take care, and uh, good luck on the show. And thank you again, sir. Thank you very much. That was uh, Fred Diodati, lead singer of the Four Aces. And again, he is going to be performing with his group on Valentine's Day over at the Pinellas Performing Arts Center. That's located at 4951 78th Avenue North in Pinellas Park, Florida. Tickets are $20. If you mentioned that you heard about it on the radio, you can get them for just $15. And you can also uh, give up to get the tickets, call 727 Four nine two three seven nine nine again seven two seven four nine two three seven nine nine and also for more information you can visit pinellas parkcom Time to bring in my next guest for the program. Susan Mel is regional developer and multi unit franchisee owner with the Entrepreneur Source, a business and franchise coaching company. Her background includes thirty years of business ownership experience, and she was also a nominee for one of my, uh, my awards at this past business show awards dinner. She was up for a lifetime entrepreneur award, so she is a true entrepreneur here in studio this morning. Susan, welcome to the program today. Thank you so much for having me back. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So we're talk about some hot franchises today. I mean, Susan is a source. If you're looking to get into a franchise, she offers a service that is free. So if you want to know anything about franchising, she's your contact. But she's going to tell us about some of the hot franchises today so what's the first one we'll talk about that, that's one of my favorite topics because I get asked that question all the time in the 14 years I've been doing this so we are located here in Tampa Bay and in our backyard is a company called pause that actually came in and disrupted the industry from the storage industry developing the mobile storage industry well so that really hasn't changed there's been a lot of competition over the years and they they were a franchise and um, people use those services when they move and need to store items. You call it, what is it, Pods? Well, Pods came into Pods, the market. No, Pods, okay. But this company came in and actually, so Pods disrupted the storage mm -hmm. industry, and nothing's really changed since Pods. And, and, and then I use that as an example. And this company out of Australia came in and disrupted the mobile storage industry. They're actually the first company to ever be in Manhattan. They're called Zippy Shell. And they're going national, and what, what they're doing is they have the unit on wheels, so it's a registered vehicle. So it doesn't have to be in your driveway. It can be on the street. And so in Manhattan, obviously, it can be on the street. It's a registered vehicle. And also, they'd be able to do moving very easily. Well, and, would that just be a box truck then? I mean, a box truck is a pod on wheels. So how is this different from a just a vehicle box truck? Well, that's a good question. I don't get asked that a lot. You're really good, Jamie. <laughs> so what happens is they have it on wheels, and so they can easily move it, but a lot of times people want the item stored. So instead of keeping the whole shell in storage, there's a cage inside that comes out, and they can store it and reuse the shell. So one of the challenges is how much you know investment in a company and all the assets – it makes it really simple. It's easy to move. And so they also have a program called Zippy U, which I think is brilliant because what they do is they partner with universities to be the preferred vendor. And they're getting these uh, young adults as customers early on when they're moving out in the spring and coming back in the fall. But as they continue to be, you know, get married and, and move, 
they're going to know about Zippy. So it's a it's an amazing company, and I'm I'm, I'm really is this, enjoying. And you said this is them. mostly going on, uh, real popular up in Manhattan and uh, the New well, York. They were the first ever mobile storage company to go in Manhattan because they're on wheels. Okay, because I've be not seen that down vehicle. here in Florida. Are they operating down well, here? Well, right it's now? available in Tampa Bay. That's why I wanted to talk about it today because oh, it's awesome. not available here. I um, I helped a gentleman and his son up in uh, Jacksonville. Um, they invested in it, and they actually partnered with a moving company that only does national moves, so they get all the local moves and, and the other inquiries just to store items. So it's a great partnership, but it's a So it's a pod company. on wheels. It's a registered motor vehicle, so Correct. people can leave it on their driveway, and then they drive it to the storage facility, and then it can sit forever, however long, correct? That's correct. That's and it, correct. And it's called Zippy? Or Zippy Shell. Zippy and, Shell. And so the, the, if you have already heard about it, it's too late. It's already sold out in Tampa <laughs> Bay, so I wanted to talk about some things that were available. So. Okay. Well, that's a, it's a, I didn't even know about that, uh, that uh, franchise. What's another uh, franchise that's really hot right now? now um one of the things that my clients ask me a lot they like to have things that are well established and and so if they're well established they're not going to be available so this company is actually considered well established and it's part of the Belfour restoration organization which is one of the largest world's largest restoration companies so a lot of people are familiar with Belfour they have a lot of divisions one of the reasons I like this company the name's really cool it's called Hoods H-O-O-D-Z and they what they do is they do a service that's required by all establishments that um, prepare food and, and have you know exhaust fans. So what they do is they they're the largest kitchen exhaust cleaning franchise. So they can do retail operations. They can do institutions like hospitals, uh, universities. They can do pizza clean pizza ovens because obviously you know pizza is a big thing. So it's a, one of those recession resistant business. It's required that they they do that. And uh, it's called. So Hood. it's a it's a commercial kitchen cleaning company. Yeah, they and, actually. And what's different the about them? The, well, they 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 clean the um the exhaust in the kitchen because when they're when you're cooking and everything, you get all the, you know. Oh, okay, you get all the, the build up in, in the exhaust, and, okay, and they come through. Are they? Is that franchise uh, currently available here in Tampa, or yeah. is that one sold out as no, well? No, no, no. I'm going to talk about what's available. Tampa, it's available in Tampa Bay. What's great about that? It's a uh, high repeat business, recession resistant. And it's required. Why would so. somebody want to do a franchise versus their own business, for instance? Well, you know, that I, I'm glad you asked that question because when you had your awards dinner, you had a lot of very talented entrepreneurs with some great ideas. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for over 30 years, um, but I've never had a great idea of what I wanted to do. I was an agent for GT Wireless. Unfortunately, wireless wasn't my idea. And now I've been a franchisee with the Entrepreneur Source. So it's a great opportunity for people that want to get into business because 75% of people do. But, you know, 5% of the ready, willing, and able, but there's the other 70% who don't have an idea of what they want to do or how to go about it. So for many people, it allows them to get into business and run a business and have a proven system that they can follow and have a high, very high success rate. That's what attracted me to it. Good point. Got to take a quick break, but uh, Susan Mel's in the studio here with me. She's going to talk about another, a couple more uh, hot franchise opportunities. So if you're considering opening your own business, you may consider franchising in addition to just starting your own business, as we were just discussing. Uh, you can learn more about her, franchisematch.com forward slash S-A-M-L. And you're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their Shop at Home Flooring Sales Service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. If you've been following that business show on Facebook and Twitter, you may have noticed the quality of some of our images. That's because one of our sponsors is pro photographer Rick Taseda, a member of the Professional Photographers of America. You can view his extensive work by going to his website at RickTaseda.com or call him for an appointment to chat about your photography needs at 813-641-4757. That's 813-641-4757. Four seven five seven. Rick Tosseda Visuals. Call him for your next event or project.
In an age when the good and the better vie for attention, it is the best that stands out. The best of Tampa Bay from Proudly, Florida is the love story for the city of Tampa, celebrating success, sharing achievements, a tribute to enterprise and community spirit. Let Proudly, Florida showcase your business to your city, your nation, and the world. For more information, email info at proudlyflorida.com and be sure to visit proudlyflorida.com. Have you ever tried to buy a home for your family only to find out that you don't qualify for a mortgage loan? You thought that after 20 years as a customer of your bank, they would help you when you needed it the most, right? Unfortunately, the banks of today are not the banks of our parents and grandparents, and our relationships with them just don't matter anymore. My name is Frank Cotto, and I'm the president of the Lincoln Lending Group. We all may need a bank, but we also need a Frank, and that's what I'm here to do for you today. Lincoln Lending Group will waive all of your lending fees, which include your mortgage, application fee, your underwriting fee, processing fees, and any bank points. Just call 813-MORTGAGE. You drop the E, and we'll drop the fee. Teresa Turner is a certified public accountant and the founder of Tax Happens, a boutique-style CPA firm providing small businesses and individuals with hands-on, personalized tax and accounting services. Although we would love to tell you how happy their clients are, we would like you to see for yourself. Tax Happens has 21 Google reviews and a 4.8 star Google rating, 17 Yelp reviews and a 5 star Yelp rating, 38 Facebook reviews and a 4.9 star Facebook rating. What sets Tax Happens apart is number one, upfront pricing, two, clear deadlines, three, personally available year round, and number four, a willingness to empower clients to do as much or as little as they desire. Visit TaxHappens.com for more information. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Back on eastbound Dr. King at Orient block in a couple lanes. Also, we still have that exit ramp closure in downtown Tampa. Off westbound I-4 and southbound 275. Going to be that way for the next couple hours. So expect some extra traffic through there. And also a crash on southbound 275 just west of downtown. Before you get to Howard, that one being moved off to the side. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson and Uteric Hills World Traffic tip line 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by Stand Up to Cancer. I'm Tony Goldwyn. 20 years ago, when my mom had lung cancer, she didn't have many choices. But today, you do. If you've been diagnosed with lung cancer, please visit standuptocancer.org slash lung cancer to learn more. A dense fog advisory for Hillsborough and counties to the east and south, then mostly sunny, high 70. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with a low 55. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And welcome back to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business. Currently in studio with uh, Susan Mel, area developer with the Entrepreneur's Source. So Susan, we are talking about a couple hot franchises there in that last segment. What's another one out there? Well, another one that I like is something where you can work out of your home. A lot of people like to have a home office, and this is called Patrice and Associates, and they do hospitality recruiting for managers for hotels and restaurants. But what's really unique about this franchise is they have national accounts, so they already have positions that need to be filled. So when franchisees uh, come on board and start their business, they've already got um, you know companies that they can find uh, positions for. Then they also get a exclusive local territory where they can develop their own direct hires with the um, um, hotels and restaurants. And what's really nice about that is that they happen to get more direct hires than they can handle. They can make it a national account and they get a 10% override. Now she is looking. Um, Patrice Rice is, is her name, and she's very well known in the industry for management recruiting. And of course, there's a lot of hotels and restaurants out there. But she's wanting uh, franchisees to develop their own team of recruiters as well. So it's a great opportunity for someone to be able to start out with a home business and and grow their business through recruiters. And it's been a very successful franchise, and that and it's available in Tampa Bay as well. Yeah, and I've course, spoken with them before. I've uh, interviewed uh, Patrice and Associates on the program before. It's been a few months, but yeah, they've oh. been through here as well. So it's a small world. Was it a there. franchisee? Yes, yeah, so it was a franchisee. I can't remember the guest yes. off the top of my uh, it's head. It's a gal that I placed in uh, over in Pinellas County. But oh, yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. Maybe that was the person I referred it you to. It could have been. Could have been. So Patrice and Associates, another hot franchise here. Uh, avail- is it available right now? Here in Tampa. In Tampa. It is available here in mm-hmm. Tampa. Oh, great, mm-hmm. great. Uh, what's another one you got for us? Um, I get asked a lot about uh, sign shops. That seems to be a big interest for a lot of people. And a lot of people look at sign shops so they can make signs. Well, with the digital age now, it's it's gotten you know you can have your creative side but it's done very easily through equipment so this company i like because they have diversified revenue streams which is something i like to look for in a business it's called speed pro 
imaging, and they're the only franchise that's wide format printing. And if you've been to the Tampa airport lately, um, they had a, they're doing redoing work there, construction. They have a shuttle that's shut down and there's a blank wall well if you walk out of the shuttle the wall isn't blank they have a beach scene well that's wide format printing they didn't come there and, and paint that they actually um, that's printed out and then put on the wall you've probably seen if you've gone to Wesley Chapel um, area at Wiregrass Mall they'll do events and they'll have uh, graphics on the sidewalk well that's done by um, a sign company right so and car wraps those are really big you've probably seen those a lot in California was really big is you can paint your car using a car wrap so when you see a car that's an unusual color that's a car wrap and it's less expensive to wrap your car than to have it repainted and some people get these expensive cars and they'll wrap it to p protect the paint so you've done learn some secrets in the sign business but they do wide format printing so they're selling directly to the sign shops because they're not, they don't have the equipment. It's not something that they would necessarily have on a regular basis. So they sell directly. So they're a wholesaler, and they can also go directly to the consumer for some of the larger projects. Now, how many uh, people have you helped get into franchises uh, through the years now? Um, that's another great question. I've been doing this for about 14 years, so I've, I've placed hundreds of people all over the country. I don't work just locally. I work with people all over the country in all different uh, age groups. Um, a lot of people are getting their families involved, um, all different kind of educational levels and skill sets. You know, so it, it, anybody that has a di desire to be self-employed, uh, franchising is a great way to be a roadmap and a guide to help them be successful. What about people that have a business and they want to develop it into a franchise themselves? Can you help them with that? Well, I can help recommend someone that can help them do that. We don't generally do that ourselves. Um, we'll help them once they become a franchise to find franchisees. Is that something that you would recommend to a business owner that they consider franchising it versus building it or developing other uh, locations uh, per, under their own ownership? Well, th I would recommend someone to talk to that could tell them whether they should be a licensed or they should be a franchisee or forget it that doesn't make sense for example um, scuba diving I always wondered why scuba diving shops weren't a franchise and so I started looking into it when I got into the business well because scuba diving is not going to go national you're not going to have it everywhere I mean I don't know maybe why not North Dakota I don't know if anybody's going to want to <laughs> scuba dive up there <laughs> is there a certain industry and I'm probably you're probably gonna say restaurants but is there a certain industry that franchising the franchise model works well for versus other industries that franchising just fails miserably well there's 94 different industries and I one of the things that I discovered is that food is only 10 percent and I know when I sold my first business and was looking at franchises I thought they're all food and retail and cost a lot of money so the entrepreneur source is a franchise and a lot of people are surprised to hear that I'm a real big fan of service-based franchise um, with retail what's happened a lot of things because of the internet retail has changed you know how we buy products on the internet sometimes so if there's this uh, um, a retail that has some value as far as they can have more than just products that are service oriented they seem to be uh, have a higher profit and a longer lasting rate. If there's something that's product oriented, then you're getting priced out sometimes because people come in and shop and then go online. But there are some retail, but I do primarily service based. Almost every, I think everything I talked about today was service based. I didn't even mention a retail. Yeah, no, and then you just said ten percent of the franchises are restaurants. Uh, I would have guessed food, that, or food and restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I would have guessed that that would have accounted for much more if you'd asked me that. Uh, right. Uh, what that uh, statistically was, uh, you know, one thing that uh, concerns me about uh, franchises is when they have a brand change, an identity change. You heard about Domino's recently going away from Domino's Pizza to just Domino's, and McDonald's going to the twenty four hour breakfast now. As a business owner, as a franchisee owner, I mean, you've got to incur these costs, correct? Um, well, when it's retail, yes. I was in the wireless business, and we changed our, you know, our name. We went from GTE MobileNet to GT Wireless to Verizon. Um, yeah, so the sign companies love that when you do that. So. Yeah, but it just, I mean, uh, here you are, a business owner, you only own one location, but now you're being told by Domino's, now you got to change your sign. I mean, that's that's a big cost for the average small business owner. Or now you got to set up your McDonald's to, you know, run 24-hour breakfast. So they, they don't help with the cost of that? I don't believe so. I've had this discussion with uh, another uh, business owner who uh, specializes in franchises, and it's something uh, the business owner just has to incur as part of the franchise agreement. So we'll talk a little bit more with Susan Mel coming back from the break. Again, she's with the Entrepreneur Source. If you're considering franchising as a, a way of uh, growing or starting a business, please consider her your resource. She can help you free of charge. And you can learn more about her at esourcecoach.com forward slash S-A-Mel. Again, esourcecoach.com forward slash S-A-Mel. And also learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. 
Hi, welcome to Jaegers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Jaegers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop at home vans that have all the flooring type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tile, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. to say what she saw. Help protect Florida from terrorist threats. If you see something, say something. Call 1-855-FLA-SAFE or report suspicious activity online at fdle.state.fl.us. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Crash in the countryside area, southbound US 19, south of Curlew, blocking a couple lanes. Also, slow traffic on the Courtney Campbell Causeway into Tampa, disabled vehicle before you get to Rocky Point. Southbound 275 and westbound I 4, the downtown exit ramp is closed due to a serious crash investigation and expect some delays through there. And also, southbound 275, slow from downtown out to around Howard Avenue. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abraham Sun Uter at Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line, 866 545 9595. This report is brought to you by Unbound. When you sponsor through Unbound, you not only open the door to education for a young person, you empower a family to build a foundation of financial stability, empowerment, and respect. See your contribution grow into opportunity at unbound.org. Winds Weather Center forecasts today's high around 70 degrees. Sunny skies for the most part, a few hazy scattered clouds here and there. Low in the mid-50s the weekend. Just a touch cooler, upper 60s each day. We'll see partly sunny skies and expect a bit of a breeze each day. Impact Radio, 1250 winds, WHNZ. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Missed the show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And welcome back to the program, everybody. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business each weekday morning at 8 a.m. here on 1250 Winds WHNZ. And also we do a sixth show each and every week. That show entitled That Business Show, the Real Estate Edition, airs Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. where I and my co-host Frank Coto, owner of the Lincoln Lending Group, talk all about real estate uh, related topics. So if we can in any way help you buying or selling real estate, I and Frank want to be your source. I'm the realtor, Frank's the lender. So you can learn more about uh, he and I over at tampabayradio.com and also his website, lincolnlend.com. Uh, in studio here with uh, Susan Mel, area developer for the Entrepreneur's Source. She is an excellent resource for those of you out there that are considering starting a business and want to do franchising. And Susan, you were talking about in that last segment about you know what happens when a brand change comes through a, uh, through a franchise. But, you know, some franchises, you say, do incur the costs or do help pick up the, uh, you know, the resulting expenses that come uh, as about of a brand change. But you focus on service-based businesses. Why is this? Primarily because I was in retail for 17 years, and I understand that the, the investment of that and the ongoing overhead costs. But I have a lot of clients that, that do like retail, but they do have to understand, like you said, some of the costs that might they might have to incur down the road. Every franchise is different. So I like my clients to look at three different business models and three different industries 
industries so they can better get a better idea of what they want more of and less of and understand the cost. And some franchises handle that every franchise handles their royalties different, their franchise fee, and how if they have a, a change and they have to change, you know, the branding and the costs involved, they might help them out on, you know, reducing the royalties for a period of time or maybe even, you know, help them with the cost. So it's just different for every franchise. And so without having the conversations, you know, you would know. But I do like service space. They ramp up much faster, much lower investment, um, and give you, I feel like, you know, a different kind of a lifestyle. Um, one of the things that's interesting when people think about real um, retail, that you can just open it up and people will come. But there's a lot more to retail than just opening up the doors, you know, the marketing, you know, networking and, and being out there in the community and, and making sure you have a good reputation. Because right now with the Internet, that can hurt you as well, you know you don't have a good presence in retail so just generally speaking somebody that's interested in starting their own business mm -hmm. what type of financial investments what type of financial savings would somebody need just on the lower end to sure. get something started well one of the things that's changed in 2014 the government came out with a new SBA program called SBA Express and it's been a real gift for myself and my clients where they only have to have a credit score of 675 or better and no collateral. It's an unsecured line of credit up to $150,000. And that really will cover their franchise fee, their working capital, and even a salary to pay themselves during the ramp-up time. Only requires 10% down. It's a 10-year loan, which keeps the monthly payments loan low, no prepayment penalty, and it's about 6.25%, which is really amazing because it's unsecured. If you look at your credit cards, that's an unsecured loan, and if you were to borrow against your credit cards, you'd be about 24%. Mm -hmm. So it's really, uh, it's been a big game changer, and most of my clients do have good credit. If they don't have a credit score over 675 due to, you know, things that happen in their life, we help them with, we provide companies that will help them you know, with their credit score, so in about six months they can then qualify for the loan. Well, incredible. And a nice little financing option that I wasn't even aware of, so very uh, good resource there. Real quick, mm -hmm. what's the skill set that somebody in the franchise business would need to have? Well, one of the things that I feel that's helpful is people that have managed divisions, uh, run companies, been in a leadership role. Um, business development is helpful, but if they're, that's not them, they're willing to hire people. I do have some people that so will say, well, I'm willing to hire people with those qualities. They may not be me, but I'll hire someone. So that's going to be a higher investment. So I have some you know, people that realize that that's some, what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are and, and really be, pay attention to what that is. But I do feel that business development is really important in any kind of business. So if you're not the salesperson, then you have to be willing to hire someone to do that because every business is about sales. Well, there's been some great information in this interview, some great resources. Susan, for people that you've inspired to start their own business through fran franchising, what's the best way they can get in touch with you? Well, my office number is 813-862-0218, and my email address is S-A-M-E-L, M-E-L-L, S-A-M-E-L, at esourcecoach.com. All right. Well, hopefully uh, we inspired some people to uh, get outside of the uh, box and uh, start their own business today through a franchise. Susan's an excellent resource, and she can help you free of charge. Susan, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you today. for having me again, Jamie. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Again, Susan Mel, area developer with the Entrepreneur Source. Pick up the phone and give her a call again, 813-862-0218. Again, 813 813-862 Eight six two zero two one eight. Time to bring on my next guest for the program. Narish Vissa is the founder and CEO of Krish Media and Marketing, as well as the co-founder and publisher of Moneyball Economics and the Moneyball Trader. Narish is also author of the number one best-selling books. 50 Shades of Marketing. Naresh, welcome to the program today. Thanks so much, Jamie. It's a pleasure to be on. So give us a little bit of a snippet of the digital economy. You're involved in digital marketing in this space. Give us a little bit of a snippet of the digital economy as it is now. So there's the 20th century economy, which is uh, kind of the, the status quo, or it was a status quo, and there's a 21st century economy, which is the, the digital age that we live in now. And the digital economy is really the future of the way business will be conducted. So um, it's already the, 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 the industry is humongous and almost every uh, sector within uh, commerce is being disrupted by the digital space. So it's not just uh, kind of Internet based businesses, but we're talking everyday things in life. So payment systems, uh, dating, social networks, social lives completely being disrupted by the digital space. So yeah, wrote, speaking of payments, I mean, now there's this new payment system out there called Bitcoin. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a, it's a way to exchange currency strictly on the on the web. And it's yep, uh, very familiar with Bitcoin. Actually, I, I had a previous company, which was a Bitcoin publisher, and ended up selling my stake in that. 
Uh, but Bitcoin is a digital currency, and really the the goal with Bitcoin is to reduce uh, the the charges that you that credit card companies face. But it also uh, has a capability of transferring money instantaneously. So previously, if you went through, uh, let's say TransUnion, you would have to wait three to four days. You still have to do that three to four business days to transfer money overseas. Now you can do that immediately with Bitcoin with very low transaction costs. It carries a, a lot of benefits to merchants because of uh, chargeback, or it really gets rid of chargebacks, and uh, it's just a very efficient way of of uh, conducting business. The problem, however, is it's still very complicated to understand, and the average person is just not going to be able to. to and it's to untraceable get it. currency too, so there's higher risks. I mean, with uh, with hackers, and as somebody told me, if you lose your computer, you can lose the money. I don't know how true that is, but uh, there's a lot of risks associated with. Yeah, Bitcoin. so Bitcoin was created by a Japanese fellow. No one actually knows who his real name or who he is. Nobody's been able to find him. He may not even be alive, but. That's one of the problems with the digital currency. It's It was created by some guy who created a system and rules, and no one knows who this guy is. And just like any business or product, there's always going to be beta testing. There are going to be bugs and, and all that. So Bitcoin is still very, very new. And as a result, it, the, the adoption rate has been quite slow. It actually came out before 2010, and it hit a peak in 2013. Uh, when it was trading at about twelve hundred dollars per Bitcoin, and now it's crashed all the way below uh, three, uh, all the way below about four hundred dollars, and it's largely because uh, people are still trying to figure it out. They're the computer scientists, some of the smartest people in the world. They're still trying to figure it out and grow this digital currency ecosystem. So why would anyone get into that if they didn't know who created it? They don't know anything about the guy. Like I wouldn't trust that. So the, the competitive advantage with Bitcoin is what's called the blockchain technology. So um, without getting too complex, the blockchain is essentially a public ledger uh, that shows every transaction that, that someone does. Now, what you don't know is what the actual transaction is. So the transaction could have been to buy uh, 100 ounces of cocaine or to, to do anything that's, Ill that's illegal. But the the really the 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 revolutionary um, competitive advantage that this blockchain technology has is it gets rid of the middleman. It gets rid of contract attorneys, contract law. So now what you're doing is conducting business between a buyer and a seller, and there are no met middlemen in between. So um, because it's public and because it gets rid of contract law. Investors in Silicon Valley found this to be a fascinating invention. In fact, some some people like Mark Andreessen, who started Mosaic, uh, the first um, search engine, he's invested probably more than $100 million in, in his private equity company in Bitcoin because he thinks this blockchain technology is the biggest invention, the biggest innovation since the internet. And that's really Bitcoin's competitive advantage, not the currency. Um, talking about the hackers, you, to, to, to answer your question more in depth, uh, there, is credit, there is more credit card fraud than there is Bitcoin fraud. There is more internet fraud than there is Bitcoin Yeah, it makes fraud. me nervous every time I punch my credit card into any website for that matter. It just uh, right. It's so nervous. Now, especially with all the, the skimmers out there on the gas stations, too. It's <laughs> very scary. I know credit cards are definitely in a position to, they need to improve. That technology definitely needs to improve somehow. Yep. So... Uh, with digital currencies, like I mentioned earlier, they haven't been adopted as much as uh, people thought they would be adopted. But I think what will happen is um, they'll take the good parts. Over the past five years, Bitcoin has grown quite a bit. They'll take the good parts and they'll continue to grow that ecosystem and only focus on the good parts. Already the bad parts have either gone ba bankrupt, the bad companies, the bad uh, providers, bad merchants, the illegal folks, the scams. They're behind, they're behind bars, and uh, I expect that to, to grow. So you talk a lot about you know the shift in the uh, the economy to a digital economy, and of course we're seeing that all around us. How quickly will this you know spread throughout all industries? And there's there still some industries that are lagging behind with a, a conversion to like a more digital presence. Yes. Yeah, so uh, to talk about some industries that have not adopted as quickly, uh, if you look at the medical profession, the legal industry, which is really really ripe for major major disruption. I've I'm sure all of us here in this room have worked with attorneys 
and we've paid them three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars an hour to fill out a piece of paper. And they're and still the using the fax machines. And they're still using <laughs> fax machines. They they'll charge you for an email, a, a twenty word email. Um, that industry is ripe for major, major change because of the digital economy. Now, most of the other industries have already gotten disrupted. And they've gotten hit hard, really probably for the better. So if you look at newspapers, even radio, just the media industry as a whole, um, and you you look at kind of brick and mortar shops, so let's say bookstores, which are brick and mortar, they've been deeply impacted by folks like Amazon and eBay and and online merchants. The the digital economy is growing rapidly, and it's only going to continue to grow. And other industries that are going to be hit that have not been hit as much. Management consulting, for example, um, the big players, McKinsey, Bain, Boston Consulting Group, uh, they'll be fine. But there are hundreds of smaller players who are going to be replaced by uh, one man consultants or small consulting companies that have niche expertise. These are all areas that uh, I expect in, in probably 15 to 20 years, every business to be digitally oriented. Uh, commercial real estate, I think, is also going to take a hit as a result because more and more folks are going to be working from home rather than going into your standard office space with cubicle space, with, with, a, with a cubicle. So uh, there's still a lot, of, a lot of disruption to be done. Yeah, and you mentioned the medical industry, and <clears throat> every time I go to the doctor, I mean, they're still filling out prescriptions on a sheet of paper. I don't, how come that isn't, you know, digitized, and why are we still using these sheets of paper? You can't what, read. Yeah, so a couple of reasons. Number one is the medical training here, uh, really anywhere, but the medical training does not teach uh, technology and entrepreneurship that well. So the training that was done 15, 20 years ago is still being done today, and that's largely because of academia. Academia is very slow to adapt to, to change. The second thing is regulation. So government is also very slow to, to, adapt, to cha- adapt to change. Just look at uh, the Obamacare website that came out two or two and a half years, whenever that was, two years ago. It was a complete debacle of the website. It was a tech glitch, that, that's what mm-hmm. it was. And the medical indus- industry is heavily regulated uh, by government rules, and as a result, it's been uh, more lagging than other industries, or private industry. Very cool. Let me take a, a quick break. Uh, currently in studio here with Naresh Vissa. You can learn more about him, KrishMediaMarketing.com. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their shop-at-home flooring sales service, and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well born cabinets, and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. If you've been following that business show on Facebook and Twitter, you may have noticed the quality of some of our images. That's because one of our sponsors is pro photographer Rick Taseda, a member of the Professional Photographers of America. You can view his extensive work by going to his website at RickTaseda.com or call him for an appointment to chat about your photography needs at 813-641-4757. That's 813-641-4757. 4757. Rick Tosseda Visuals. Call him for your next event or project. In an age when the good and the better vie for attention, it is the best that stands out. The best of Tampa Bay from Proudly, Florida is the love story for the city of Tampa. Celebrating success, sharing achievements, a tribute to enterprise and community spirit. Let Proudly, Florida showcase your business to your city, your nation, and the world. For more information, email info at ProudlyFlorida.com and be sure to visit ProudlyFlorida.com. Have you ever tried to buy a home for your family only to find out that you don't qualify for a mortgage loan? You thought that after 20 years as a customer of your bank, they would help you when you needed it the most, right? Unfortunately, the banks of today are not the banks of our parents and grandparents, and our relationships with them just don't matter anymore. My name is Frank Cotto, and I'm the president of the Lincoln Lending Group. 
We all may need a bank, but we also need a Frank. And that's what I'm here to do for you today. Lincoln Lending Group will waive all of your lending fees, which include your mortgage, application fee, your underwriting fee, processing fees, and any bank points. Just call 813 Mortgage. You drop the E, and we'll drop the fee. Teresa Turner is a certified public accountant and the founder of Tax Happens, a boutique style CPA firm providing small businesses and individuals with hands on, personalized tax and accounting services. Although we would love to tell you how happy their clients are, we would like you to see for yourself. Tax Happens has 21 Google reviews and a 4.8 star Google rating, 17 Yelp reviews, and a 5 star Yelp rating, 38 Facebook reviews, and a 4.9 star Facebook rating. What sets Tax Happens apart is number one, upfront pricing, two, clear deadlines, three, personally available year round, and number four, a willingness to empower clients to do as much or as little as they desire. Visit taxhappens.com for more information. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. The downtown Tampa exit ramp from westbound I-4 and southbound 275 remains closed and will be that way for the next few hours. You'll have to continue through the junction and exit at Howard Avenue and double back to get to downtown unless you exit off before you get to the junction. Also, southbound Veterans Expressway slow from Lineball to Waters. Minor crash off to the side there. And southbound 75 slow from Fletcher to just past Fowler. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson Uterick Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Someone you know is suffering from Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. They're dealing with excruciating pain and days when they won't be able to get out of bed. Help someone you know and support the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America at ccfa.org. A dense fog advisory for Hillsborough and counties to the east and south, then mostly sunny, high 70. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with a low 55. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And welcome back to the program, everybody. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business. Curly in studio here with Narish Visa. He is the founder and CEO of Krish Media Marketing. Learn more about him, KrishMediaMarketing.com. And Narish, you have a number of different resources. I mean, you're quite the uh, accomplished uh, academ uh, uh, academic as well. I mean, a master's degree, uh, you know, multiple uh, bachelor's degrees here in broadcast journalism and accounting and financing. I mean, you know, where do you find the time to put out all these different resources these days? I mean, we want to talk about Moneyball Economics, Hookernomics Report. Uh, <laughs> Excuse but, me, what? Yeah, it's, that's what it is. Moneyball Hookers? Economics, Hookernomics, okay. yes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what is this, and where do you find time to put out all these different resources? Yeah, so the first thing about the time, really the digital age has uh, reduced the, the cost of starting a business and the cost of conducting business. So I work from home. Uh, there's no need to go into an office anymore. I used to go into an office, uh, had a desk job and all that. But when you work from home, you don't have to worry about driving, traffic, the stresses of going back and forth, meetings, you kind of set your own schedule. And so as a result, it's almost like uh, the amount of time you have multiplies tremendously when, when you work from home. Now, Moneyball Economics is a, an investment publishing company that I co-founded with my partner, uh, Andrew Zat Zatlin, out in Silicon Valley. He used to be an economist at Cisco during the dot-com boom. And Moneyball Economics is essentially a, a big data publisher so we uh we collect analyze and use that we collect and analyze data and use that data to make economic forecasts and also to make investment recommendations in publicly traded companies so you you brought up hookernomics for example we have something called the rise of hookernomics free report available at moneyballeconomics.com one of the indices that we created is called the vice index the vice index consists of four vices that we track. Um, so we're talking uh, hookers, gambling, alcohol, and marijuana. So that really is related to hookers, then. I wasn't that one. So it, it, it really okay, is. I didn't related. know something I'm missing here. So <laughs> well, why else would have I told that lame joke? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so essentially, what we call them the the four Bs. So that's he booze. said. Yep, like that was a lame joke. <laughs> <laughs> the what? four Vs is a Bs, Bs. Bs. So okay. it's booze. Uh, blackjack, bongs, and broads. So these are the vices or something, and you can measure different economic uh, activity based so, on this. So what we do is we we use this index to measure two things. Number one is retail spending, and the second thing is, or sorry, retail sales, and the second thing is consumer spending. 
So it's a leading indicator, about three to four months leading uh, our index. Bloomberg actually named our index the second most accurate forecasting that they track. They track about 70 to 80 different economists in the country. And uh, they named us numbers. We, we should have actually been number one, but we were wrong like two quarters. Where are you getting the numbers on the hookers? Are the pimps reporting this stuff to you these days? I mean, you got a network of pimps together uh, finally putting out reports for us? So that's, Dirty politicians. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a secret sauce. So uh, gambling. He's a pimp, by the way. He's just not saying that. He's in here. He's a pimp. He knows the lingo, secret sauce and all that. So uh, mar- the the marijuana, the gambling, the alcohol, a lot of it is publicly available through uh, publicly traded companies, but also through government data. So the government does report there. We also do have our own private sources for those three areas. Now, of course, the hookernomics stuff, that's not as a, that data is not as accessible. Let's just say uh, I mentioned earlier, that's our secret sauce. We we have some very deep contacts. I would say, man, that's that's interesting, man. I feel like I'm sitting next to Han Solo or something. <laughs> interesting stuff here. And Where's you, your Wookiee? You put out this uh, report at moneyballeconomics.com. Uh, how, how often is the information updated? So every month we publish our vice index. So the next vice index is going to be coming out this Monday. So people can go to moneyballeconomics.com, download that free report. You automatically get our free research. And uh, stay tuned later this weekend or on Monday you'll be getting our latest January Vice Index. Interesting. I'm going to start uh, checking out this report every month myself. <laughs> Real quick, I'm going to go back to the uh, digital economy. We talked about that in that last segment. You know, So with the move to the digital economy, what's the future of small business under this economy? Well, small business is going to grow tremendously. I think corporatism is going to start uh, dwindling a bit. There's going to be a lot of outsourcement overseas because, as I mentioned, the cost of doing business has gone down tremendously. You can outsource now for one one hundredth the cost that you would pay someone here in the United States. And that presents a tremendous opportunity for small businesses, independent consultants. The important thing is as an individual, you need to develop an expertise. So your previous guests who were on, they very clearly had strong expertises in uh, niche areas. That's the most important part. You need to develop that niche expertise because then you make yourself more marketable to, for yourself and also your your small business. Very cool. Well, uh, Narish, I greatly appreciate you being in the studio here on this early Friday morning. Hopefully, we can drive you some new uh, viewers over to your uh, websites. You can learn more about him over at uh, NarishVisa.com and also get his Moneyball Economics Hookonomics report <laughs> at MoneyballEconomics.com. Puts out a new report each month. Narish, thank you so much for being in the studio. Thank you, today. Jamie. It's been a pleasure. And again, Narish Visa, founder and CEO of Krish Media and Marketing and also the Moneyball Economics Hookonomics report. Learn more about him. Also, Krish Media. MediaMarketing.com. You got all kinds of websites, man. You're, you're, you're really uh, stepping it up here in terms of resources. So I commend you uh, for that. Also, want to thank uh, Susan Mel, who was on the uh, first half of today's show. She is she is your resource for anybody out there looking to uh, start a business in the uh, franchise model. Her services are free of charge, so uh, definitely uh, connect with her. Best way to get her: eight one three eight six two zero two one eight. Again, eight one three eight six two zero two one eight. And also be reminded of the uh, Valentine's dance that's going on featuring the. Uh, Four Aces had uh, lead singer of the group Fred Diodati on in the first segment. That's going on uh, Friday. I mean, sorry, Sunday, uh, February fourteenth, here at two o'clock at the Pinellas Performing Arts Center. Tickets are available uh, twenty dollars and up, fifteen dollars if you mention it. You heard it on the radio. Pick up the phone and give them a call seven two seven. 492-3799 or visit Pinellas-Park.com for more information. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I'll see you all in here Monday morning at 8 a.m. on That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business.